As we look at paragraph two, I want you to think about this little sketch here in the corner. So we see solar radiant energy striking the Earth in three different regions, the North Pole, the, the middle or the equator area of the Earth, and the South Pole. And you will notice that in this particular sketch, this would be summertime in the Northern Hemisphere because the Earth is tipped toward the Sun. And so the Northern Hemisphere gets more direct sunlight than the Southern Hemisphere, which gets sunlight at quite a bit of an angle. You can see that sunlight in the Southern Hemisphere strikes at an angle. And the Northern Hemisphere strikes pretty much straight on. And at the North Pole, strikes at an angle, but not as much of an angle as the South Pole. And so in understanding what's happening here, no matter where the Earth is in its orbit around the Sun, the equator gets more Sun no matter what the season. And so the atmosphere above the equator becomes more consistently warmed than the atmosphere at the poles. Now, in the summertime, the North Pole gets more warming than the South Pole. But in general, the equator, the equatorial regions on the Earth, get more heating and so more warming of the atmosphere consistently year-round. Generally, if we think about the atmosphere, the atmosphere tends to rise in the equatorial regions because warm air rises. And so in the areas around the planet where the sun consistently strikes the earth more directly on a daily basis year round, those air masses tend to rise and warm and become very humid. While the air masses at the poles tend to stay much cooler, actually much colder, because solar radiant energy is striking the poles at such a shallow angle so the atmosphere tends to sink at the poles and rise at the equator. And so I believe you've watched a video or two where the global wind patterns have been presented to you, and, th and this is what actually causes it. The, the equatorial winds tend to rise away from the, the surface into the atmosphere, and the atmosphere at the polar regions tends to sink. And if you think about it, this makes sense. What does warm air do? And what does cold air in the atmosphere do? Warm air rises, and cold air sinks. So again, rising away from the equator, warm air rising away from the equator, cold air from high up in the atmosphere sinking at the poles. If we actually take this a step further and think about this in relation to air pressure, warmer air is lighter and rises from the surface of the planet, therefore relieving pressure at the surface or less pressure because the air molecules are lighter, less dense, and air at the poles sinking because it's heavier and denser creating greater air pressure. So colder air masses have greater pressure, warmer air masses have less air pressure or a lighter air pressure. Review the videos that have to do with the global wind patterns that will help you to understand how air moves globally on the planet. So, paragraph two, as the air in the atmosphere is heated at the equator and cooled at the poles, it forms air masses. These air masses are what we call pressure systems. An air mass is a huge body of air that has similar temperatures, air pressures, and humidity throughout. Some air masses can be cold and wet, while others can be hot and dry. Sometimes two air masses of different temperatures and air pressures and humidity collide. When this happens, a front is formed, and we'll be taking a look at fronts in the next two paragraphs. But fronts are where the air mass moves along the surface, and by that I mean if you're standing by the road and a car comes by you going 40 or 50 miles per hour and pushing wind out of its way as it would go past you. In, in the same way, this little sketch is an analogy of that, in that you have the upper level winds that which pull air masses along with them as they go and the jet stream would be like the car and as the jet streams push into a region or steer air masses along across the surface of the earth as you see this jet stream doing to this high pressure system or this cold air mass you have an air mass that moves and the front edge of this air mass is what we would call a cold front because this is a cold air mass 
moving this direction into a region. So this might help you to understand just the terms that we're beginning to use when we talk about weather patterns and weather maps and understanding weather. We do need to briefly go back and just make sure we tag a few of the keywords with our green marker. So air masses, what are they? Well, an air mass is a huge body of air that has similar temperatures, air pressures, and humidity throughout. And why don't you just make sure you remember these. Temperatures, air pressures, humidity, which would be moisture, and basically a front. Fronts are where the air mass moves along the surface. Also, air masses, we understood them to be pressure systems, both high pressure systems and low pressure systems. Finally, with your blue, let's get some main ideas. We didn't write any questions for understanding in this particular reading. There's a lot of discussion in this reading, so there's a lot of sketches and a lot of discussion about the main ideas. But basically, the air at the atmosphere is heated at the equator and cooled at the poles, and it forms air masses. That's pretty key. And then an air mass is a huge body of air. We have that in as a description in green. Air masses can be cold and wet. Others can be hot and dry. When air masses collide of different pressures and humidity and temperatures, they, call, they cause fronts. We're good there. Weather maps are important for understanding and predicting weather. And you're going to see this when we do the gizmo with Explore Learning. But um, this, ought to, this ought to do it for this, these two paragraphs. Please make sure that these paragraphs are marked, that you have all the sketches. You really can't do without having these sketches and all of the diagrams that we've looked at and all the notes uh, in this reading as we go through it. So thank you for being careful and getting all that. There are two models, one of a high-pressure system, one of a low-pressure system, with some characteristics of high pressure systems and low pressure systems or cold air masses and warm air masses and I'm gonna put those up in a in a video separate from this one so that video will be uh, will come between paragraph one and two and paragraph three and four and then after that video uh, and you get those sketches down and get those into your notes uh, then I want you to take a look at paragraph three and paragraph four